And that's what it looks like when it's burning. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I wanna to show you a brand new hobo stove design. Stay tuned. One of the challenges that you have in making these types of can stoves or hobo stoves as they're commonly known is when you have a cup this size and you want to cook on it, it, it doesn't fit very well. It wants to fall down inside. But you may also want to use a frying pan, such as this for instance. Now it's not a big deal, except that you have to make sure that there's enough place for the flames to come out. So it becomes a bit of a problem. Of course, you could punch holes all the way around, and there's different ideas on how to do this. But I came up with a great design, and I came up with this working on the last video. And I'll make sure and put a link to that right about here. So if you want to see that, you can check that out. But in doing so, I came up with a great design, and I want to share it with you. So let's get to it. So for this project, you're going to need a tall number three tin can. Now here in the United States, this is the type of tin can that tomato juice, for instance, comes in. And I like to use a safety can opener so that there aren't any sharp edges. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So the first thing we want to do is using our Sharpie or actually Milwaukee ink saw, which is good for marking on metal, we want to identify where the seam is because we really don't want to cut into that if we can help it. And what we're going to do is we're going to count up four ribs. So one, two, three, four. And at that fourth rib, we're going to just make a line this way. And we want to do maybe 25%. This will be the feed hole and feed ramp. Okay, so that's very important. Then we want to count up just a few more ribs. We're going to count up eight more ribs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that. Do the same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we want to draw a line here, just like this. And then connect the dots. And you don't have to be perfect with this, just so that we have basically an opening like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a large paint stick. And this is for stirring, of course, a five gallon bucket. And we want to center it right in that hole. So right about where our feed hole is going to be, we want to try to put that right in the center. Okay, once we do that, we're going to mark the can on this side and this side. And then also making sure that stays centered, spin it around and mark it in the back. And then once you get that done, of course making sure that everything stays as centered on the can as possible. We're going to spin it 90 degrees, just like this, making sure, of course, that it's in the center of the can. And we're going to make marks here as well, all the way around. All right. Now, if we've done this properly, we should have marks all the way around the can at regular intervals. Next we're going to take a 16 penny nail and this one I have ground the head off on both sides and kind of rounded it so that it can fit flush and carry it in my wallet and without that big head sticking out so that way it rides somewhat flat. But we're going to support this with one hand and we're going to poke a hole at the corner here of the can. Now Tin cans are quite soft, so they're relatively easy to punch through. So don't take a whole lot of work. And then kind of wiggle it a little bit to open that up a little more. And then if you want, do it on the other side as well. Just makes it easier for our cuts. And like I said, it's very easy to do with a 16 penny nail. Now we have our two holes. Next are a pair of Fiskars snips. And if I were actually going to go hoboing, this would be one of the things that I would absolutely insist on having. This is so useful uh, for so many things because it's, uh, it's an all-purpose cutter. Besides metal, it'll cut aluminum and heavy fabric. Uh, it will also cut leather. So a uh, very handy tool to have. So we unlock it. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out on three sides. 
So we're going to cut the top line here where the two holes are and then the two sides but we're going to leave the bottom one intact. So there we have it all three sides cut out. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some air holes in the back. And I found something some time ago at Salvation Army that's very very handy and I carry it on my keychain. It is one of these. And this is a folding church key uh, and bottle opener. This triangular shape here is called a church key. You can find these on Amazon or eBay. But we're going to use this to punch holes. We're going to come directly in back of this opening and we're going to put one hole here in the very center and then we're just going to space one on each side like this. So we have three and then we're actually going to end up with a total of five. It's just easier to work out from side to side to keep them even. So we have this. Those are very, very important for airflow. And I find that five holes is the ideal amount. Next we're going to take the snips and we're going to cut each one of these marks all the way down but just two ribs. Trying to keep them relatively straight although cutting through this first rim can be a little difficult. I'm going to go down that way. Right there. And we're going to do that all the way around at each one of the marks. So what we have is we have cutouts all the way around. Now for these next steps you may want a multi-tool, a pair of pliers, and it may be advisable for most people to wear gloves. These edges are sharp, so uh, I don't always wear gloves. I just try to be very, very careful. And uh, of course your mileage may vary on that. But what we're going to do is we're going to do our best to flatten this out. And we're going to open this up. And this is going to become our feed ramp. So using the pliers, we get in here and we can start working this. And start pulling this a little flatter. And again, this is going to take a little bit of doing. You just have to work with it until you get it open. I find that in this process here, if you can take and flatten the can just a little bit right here in this curve, it makes that last and final bend a little easier. And then we just sort of manipulate it around. And this becomes our feed ramp. And this solves a major problem with a lot of hobo stoves that just have a basic opening in that when you put the sticks in, often the embers want to fall out. This way we can put longer sticks in and shove them in when we need to. The next part of this process is we're going to start here at the front and we're going to cut out at this second rib every other one. So just like this. like that and then we'll go to the next one We'll leave one intact and we'll cut out this next one when you're done you should have something that looks like this alright now we want to take these and we want to flatten these and we want to fold these in and again for doing something like this it's very handy to have a pair of uh, pliers of some sort and try to keep this as level as you can but go ahead and flatten that out just like this and then where this sticks up here you'll want to flatten that out too continue to work with it until you have all the flaps folded in all the way around leaving a little bit of a space here now it is very important when you're doing this that all of these are at the same height relatively speaking. For the last and final phase, what makes this stove so interesting is you want to take these tabs and you want to lift them up. So that they sit like that and if you get that about right, you can kind of work, work it and push it in until all these are at about the same level. You have an affair like that. What's great about this is you can set a small cup on it just like this full of water. As you can see it has water in it and it will hold it very very well. It's sturdy enough it's not going to fall over. It's also big enough that I can set 
a frying pan on top. It's nice and sturdy. It's got plenty of space to hold it. And we also have area here for the flames to come out the sides as well as the heat to come right up the center. All right, let's go ahead and light it and show you how it works. And that's what it looks like when it's burning. And of course, it's very easy to feed with this feed ramp right here. Just makes all the difference in the world to hold the wood up and to let it flame up properly. And then as I said, of course, we can take our full cup of water and set it right on top. And we have an absolutely perfect hobo stove situation where we have one tin can, nothing fancy, just a few very basic simple tools, plenty of place for the flame to come out around the top edges, and an easy way to feed and maintain the fire. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take great survival and bushcraft training classes here at our facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.